Okay, this is a uh, 440, 30 over. So that makes it a 446, I guess. Uh, Ross pistons, polished rods, ARP bolts, the whole deal there. Steel crank, 10 and 10, was cut. And it has uh, Adelbrock, put that on, an Adelbrock performer, 440 intake, it's a spread bore. And I altered an engine stand. It's got this plate on it, onto the bell housing, that can be taken off easily. It's got these made. There's one bolt right there on both both legs. That's it. Bolted to the engine. Takes care of that pretty easily. This side, there's one bolt here, and then the, the bolt that goes with the uh, engine stand. Onto this, I welded pieces of pipe about that long. What you're looking at here just slides down over it. Whenever uh, I want to, I'm going to change the cam and lifters and uh, springs and stuff. I can unplug this and pull the, da the dash right off of it. It slides off, unhook the oil line, of course. And fans. This runs the fans. And this makes the ignition hot. And you turn it on and hit this button. That makes it run. So it's got a Hughes cam, ended up with a, a mild cam, but it's got 530 lift on the exhaust, 518 on the intake, and it's just too much for my stock valve train that I want to run in it. Um, I'm going to put a comp cam in it later tonight, lifters and the valve springs and all that. So we'll see how she runs then. But works pretty good. On the dyno, it did 514 at uh, 3200 held 500 up to like 47 i believe that's on another video and it uh, only ran up to 433 one horsepower because of the little 670 holly we had on it with the right uh carb the guy in a dyno said probably in the 530 range on horse on torque 450 horse which is plenty for what i'm going to run it for it's a street engine that's all but it uh, should work pretty well. Going in my 65 Sport Fury. Making some videos about that also. So right now I'm gonna I'm comparing what it sounds like now with the Hughes in it, mild cam. Uh, we'll see what it sounds like with the comp cam I'm putting in it. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Uh, got the oil line, the oil pressure gauge unhooked, stuffed in there, and the end of it's underneath that. It'll pull off of uh, the pins down there, which you'll see in a moment. All unwired. It was real simple to do that naturally. If I wanted to just uh, take off the panel here, the dash panel, the control panel, there's a plug right here. I simply unplugged that, unplugged the ignition, and I'll take this off of the top to get into there if I need to get in there, maybe to change the radiator out or something happens to it, I don't know. But anyway, um, that's all there is to it. And we'll be changing that bottle out with something better. That's for the overflow for the radiator. We'll be uh, doing something with that. Let's take the pan off. Also, I would take this hose off here or here and because this stays naturally on there, it's welded. So, yep, that's all there is to it. Um, as you'll see, this simply just picks off of there. Very easy to work on the engine then. And there it is. Seconds later, slid off of pieces of pipe right there. Easily 
work on it now. I'm so glad I didn't have this thing in the car. Um, as I said in another, uh, the beginning of the video, one hole, that's it. One hole on that leg, that's my ground. And then that hole right there, that's all that was drilled in the engine stand. We had to take the arms off of the plate here that goes to the back of the engine and I can put those right back on and the engine stand is a regular stand again so that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. 